Hornby local the weekend horn and today ting ting na vekun chibai. Tunia i program ding ina hiya kakianga una unu jam saute PhD University of Alberta Canada pan ama kakianga oma ama ahile Manipura scientist masapen pu lian saute tanua hiya ama to tunia hiya imuna bang zia ka hong pai ahi kile ai thil tuam tuam ama pan na zil khia thei om hiam chi lamet na to holim na ine dia hiya holim na kha sa pawa hong pao zia zia di ka hiwa ama kha om khia na sot pi ai tang man na e pao bang le e thei non cha lo le lo a thei thama hi le le e a pao siam lo chao hi na e sa pao hon jang di ka hi i'm glad to have a quick interview with you jam today so can you please tell me about your family background? Okay, uh, so my father is uh, a scientist. He has, he was the first scientist of Manipur. His name is Lian Chin Tang Sote. And my mother is Ching Lun Man Sote. And uh, she works as a final financial sale representative in one of the biggest ca uh, banks in Canada. So that's... Uh, my parents and I also have a younger sister, just one younger sister. She is uh, has a bachelor's in computing science in University of Alberta, which has one of the top, uh, one of the most world-renowned computing science programs. So uh, that's her background as well. And she's a year younger than I am. <laughs> yes. Yeah, can you tell me uh, a bit more about your educational background? So I did my PhD and my bachelor's in University of Alberta. Uh, in uh, For my bachelor's, I did uh, electrical engineering, nano engineering, and for my PhD, I did solid state electronics. Okay. Yeah, and uh, um, it's a, it was a natural transition from my undergrad to PhD, so it made sense, and I, I fell in love in the subject during my undergrad when I was searching for my soul, let's say, and then, uh, and so I decided that I wanted to try to go as far as I can with it educationally, and so um, in, on December 18th, I was, I had my final examination, and then I was finally awarded my PhD as well, so I guess in a way I followed my father's footsteps in getting a PhD, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. How many times you have been here uh, in your hometown, uh, Lamka town? Uh, so I have visited four times in total, uh, twice when I was much younger, and then the third time would be uh, in 2008 and now in 2017, this year, okay. yes. And uh, what are you doing currently? So, uh, because I just finished my PhD and I came here uh, the day before I got my PhD, I left. So, but now what I'm doing is I work uh, uh, for Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, which is in California. And uh, it's, uh, I apply a lot of my knowledge that I learned in my PhD uh, into an effort that we, I was hired on uh, in, in um, California, yeah, in L Berkeley National Labs is what it's called, yes, okay. yeah. So uh, can you tell me about uh, uh, this University of Alberta, no, Canada, can you tell me more about this? Yeah. So University of Alberta is a top five university in Canada, and um, when I joined the university, it was top 50 in engineering as well. So it's, it has a very good reputation worldwide. And uh, they, so in undergrad, there is a good mix of both local and international students. Um, in gra in gra graduate studies where, you know, you go for higher education, there's many, many there's almost more international students than uh, locals. So um, it's, it's a very big university. There's around 30,000 in total for students. And it's a, it's a very nice place as well, very friendly. And because there's so many different kinds of people, you, you, you can either find people who are similar to you or 
people are very willing to make friends with everybody else. The professors themselves are uh, very multicultural as well, so everybody feels welcome. Yeah, it's a very good university that way, yes. And um, so it has a good mix of uh, being welcoming and also be having a good reputation in the, in the world as well, just like all very good universities, yes, yeah. Can you tell me more about the research? So, yeah, the, so the Times of India, I'll talk about that a little bit first, that the reason that we got recognition is that we were able to publish in one of the top journals in the world for a lot of scientists, which is Nature uh, Communications. And, um, and what my research that I was talking about is basically um, we... You know, we have all computers and phones and we want, basically we want technology everywhere we go and people now want to take it to the next step. They, or at least the market is saying that people want to take it to the next step. They don't want it just in the phone anymore. They want it on your clothes. They want it on your skin. They want it in glass. And so there, there's a whole different kind of uh, challenges that scientists and researchers and engineers have to figure out before they realize that. And so my research is in the forefront as that is of that challenge as well as how do we how do we put electronics in all these exotic mediums that we're not used to seeing electronics as we as we as humanity and society move forward, right? And um, so the reason that uh, we were able to get into this top journal is that we proposed uh, something very different than what others have. And so it, it was, at least in our view, it was a step f f moving forward in this, you know, in this concerted goal for, you know, technology and humanity and society, I guess you could say like that. <laughs> yeah, that's why, um, and that's really what my research is based upon is um, what, what, what do we really have to do to realize that goal? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, can you tell me more about the achievements what uh, you have got so far? Uh, so, um, it's, uh, <laughs> It's hard to recall, but let me try. Um, not because there's so many, but... Uh, so, of course, I got my PhD, which I'm personally very proud of. I think uh, PhD is a very hard thing to achieve because it's five years of your life, and uh, usually, unlike in bachelor's or in um, grade school, there's always a test, and the teacher tests, and you get a good mark and you know you're doing a good job but in PhD you're kind of left alone your your professor and your teacher doesn't know the right answer either it's they they leave it up to you to find the right answer so sometimes it's a very hard journey because you don't know where you're going but uh, I was fortunate um, to know uh, what to do and I had very good guidance so I, I'm very proud of achieving a PhD the second thing is um, I was also lucky enough that uh, people really encouraged me to join some competitions that I did very well in. Uh, one that uh, um, that I achieved was, I guess, Falling Walls, uh, both locally and internationally. I placed second out of around 45 applicants. And uh, there was also an audience vote where the audience voted for their favorite presentation. So there was top three and then there was the audience vote. And so they voted for my presentation as the best um, that they liked the most. The second thing is the international competition. I was able to place fifth out of 100 on that one. Um, other achievements, I guess, uh, I have one patent uh, in my name and I also have one patent application also and then I have about eight publications with my name on it and um, yeah I guess uh, that's I also uh, have I guess a job with Ber Berkeley National Labs which I think was a big achievement uh, as well and that's really um, I guess that's a list of my achievements you could say <laughs> yeah uh, so why what do you think is the main reason for uh, all these achievements? Well, I think uh, 
I mean, oh, that's a very hard and good question. So I think I'm very thankful to both my father and mother for making such a huge sacrifice. Uh, they had a stable job in India and they decided to come to Canada to take a chance, you know, not only to, not only because uh, my father wanted to be, to know where the forefront of research is, but he also wanted uh, a good place for his children as well. And I think, um, I think they raised us well enough to always dream, keep dreaming, right? Even though they they may have achieved their dream, that doesn't mean we can keep can't keep dreaming. And then, I guess, uh, you know, we we have to thank God as well uh, from bringing us here, uh, for giving us the opportunity that you know others may not have. But uh, uh, it's very important to um, acknowledge that you know these opportunities wouldn't have come if the, if there was not that courage in the first place right so that's you have to be courageous always yeah yeah okay why uh, why do you choose your line of uh, this line of electronics so um when uh, when i first started my undergrad i thought uh, i wanted to do very biological uh, sounding and then I realized that it wasn't for me and I so I decided to try something different which was it ended up being electrical engineering and then I took some courses and I realized that I really loved doing this so one thing that's nice about um, I guess Canada in a way, or the West is that if even if you're lost you know in the beginning they're they're very they help you or you can take your time to find who you want to be and so I ended up finding while I was an undergrad that this is what I wanted to do and uh, the other second aspect is you know to you know it, it's going back to everything is modernizing Mo mo modernizing means more technology and I just thought that you know it would be very cool let's just say it would be very interesting if you know I was there um, also somehow contributing to advancing society uh, and, and the technological side and uh, doing nano engineering seemed to be the best way you know the best way that it was a good uh, combination of my talents my place and the opportunity that was in front of me so I guess all those things combined led me to choosing what I did, which is, I guess, doing a PhD in solid-state electronics. Yeah. Yes. In the future, any plan of coming back here or settling down here in uh, Churchanpur, Manipur, Lamka? Yeah. So that's, a, that's a, because our career just started, we're, you know, and in Canada, it seems that, you know, things are easy, but it's actually very hard. So I'm, we're thinking just short term right now. But of course, we'll come back and visit because this is where, you know, this is where uh, our people is, I guess you could say. So and our families here, too. So we'll definitely visit. Uh, for sure, and then, but first, we want to establish ourselves and our careers um, because it, those are just begin, begin beginning there too in the West. So yeah, in Canada. I, can you understand Paite, or uh, you can speak a bit? I can I can speak a bit. I definitely understand maybe eighty percent of it, uh, but I'm not there with conversation just yet. I can I can say keywords. And then, uh, and I can definitely understand most most things. So I I have to talk a little bit more, and then practice a little bit more, and then I I'm sure I'll be much better next time. Maybe I can speak in Python. <laughs> can you tell the, us more about your experience coming here in your own hometown? Uh, oh, okay. Well, it's been very nice. I mean. Uh, Everybody has been very accommodating and friendly, so even though we may have not been here for a long time, uh, they still love us, and that's, that's very nice. And uh, the town is very friendly and very cozy, is the main thing. And, um, and uh, it's, it's nice to see everybody happy 
and yeah and it's it makes you happy as well you know you're at peace as well because there's always that nervousness that oh maybe they don't like us or something like that but they do so it was good it was it's been very it's been a very nice occasion and everybody is when we don't know something they're willing to teach us uh, when I don't understand something some parts of Pai Te, they're willing to translate so it's uh, everybody is wonderful and I love them too <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, this is the first time uh, you are celebrating Christmas here uh, yes at, at least as an adult yes <laughs> yeah and it's been it's been really fun uh we've been on christmas night we stayed up very late singing songs and dancing both our ninnies and poopoos were dancing too so it was very very joyous yeah it was a wonderful time okay uh, is the celebration uh, like uh, compared to canada and uh, here in canada it's definitely more toned down um in a sense that uh it's there's eating and then there's sitting but uh not s some singing some people go caroling but mostly it's very it's it's kind of a for us at least it's a time a little bit to rest and relax and enjoy the family for others it is a big occasion um as well but uh, because we're a small family there we we take we use that time to rest a little bit from our very busy year or something like that yeah yeah. Okay. And thank you for uh, giving us precious time. And uh, can you give us a message for the viewers, uh, so that uh, like uh, they can, if somebody wants to come up over there to the west, or uh, whether you be able to guide them or not? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, the most important thing I would say is, you know, I kind of stated it before, but you have to be brave and courageous. I think that uh, even though even though it's scary, um, and you know, there's the comfort of family, but you should also try to make friends. And make connections beyond just your own family because you know you use your family or you should view your family as the people who will always be there and you know always you can always take comfort in that and so use that as a strength to move forward and you know create create more connections because you know as a family you can only grow so fast but friends can go fra faster and that's actually a way of kind of um you know raising our own community right? right so that's but you have to have courage you have to go out of your comfort zone to do that and there will always be people who are willing to help you if you're a good person so you you always have to be a good person and so that's what i would say is and and come come over to canada go go to the west you know you it, it you'll you'll definitely enjoy it as well and you can always come back home if it's uh if it's not for you but if it is for you you know you can you can you'll make everybody else happy too you'll uplift the community and that's really important yeah that's that's i guess my message yeah thanks a lot <laughs> James Saute, ama denai gian bangina ama ahile University of Alberta Canada a PhD ana zo wahia ama iswan ma ma wahia tunina ama pan entu ten leng bangiam patuam pi ina ne inge iging ta a Canada bang na ho kha kule ona gai thigi ge de he chileng gendi tuna apana program dang in 980